BYU Sports Nation. Presented by the BYU Store. Simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now from Studio B, your hosts, Jason Shepard and Dave McCann. BYU Sports Station is live. Welcome in. We are your day-to-day play-by-play right here in Studio B. Presented as always by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Today is Thursday, June 23rd, 2022. Thank you so much for tuning into the program. My name is Jason Shepard, tuned up with a man who can't wait to host the state of the Big 12 <laughs> next season. He is Dave McCann. Won't that be fun? I mean, we were do you talking, get the gig? Do we know this yet? I, I, I don't know how it's going to shake down. There's a <laughs> lot of new regulations. Uh, but I was talking with Tom yesterday before we started our show, and I go, you know, you and I have sat here every year since we went independent and talked about what in the world's going to happen next year because there was always this open-ended, I don't know if this is going to work this whole time. And this was the first year where that wasn't an issue. Yeah. The, the, the open end is closed yes. with the new conference coming up. And so it made for a lot of fun. But here's what I noticed about hosting that show. It's an uncomfortable spot for Tom and Kalani and, and everybody else because they're, they're in those uh, director's chairs, yeah. which you wonder if, if they're going to hold up. And then they're in front of, you know, 100 people, the, the media types, um, for an hour. And that's not a comfortable spot for them. And then they come in here and they're telling jokes and they're having a great time because <laughs> it's us, so Jeremy and Spencer are you. And there's no crowd. There's our crew and our cameras. It's very, it's much more natural. Sure. So I, I like to think we're teeing them up, uh, and then we're sending them out. But but there's different personalities come out. Stay to the program, yeah. and then it's a free for all when they come over here. Here's my question for you, and I've noticed this: uh, no glasses today, but glasses hosting state of the program is it more of a formal look why the why the glasses for some no glasses for others because the teleprompter is all the way across the room <laughs> okay. i thought that also may have something and to do i have with to it. read some things <laughs> okay here it's all right here okay and um and i found i when when uh up anchor in the news um we went to smaller cameras and moved them away and everyone says yeah actually you're getting older all of that's true but I found that uh, I couldn't see not in front of guilty as clear as I wanted. <laughs> uh, and so I'm going, you know what? I'm going to put these glasses on. And I'd never worn glasses a day in my life until uh, maybe four years ago. And, and uh, voila. You know, what's great is glasses are an accepted look now. Very much so. Uh, but, yeah, I had, to, I had to see some words across the room. And so the glasses were on. Today, I just have to see you. You just have to see and me. This, and we're, you know, all natural. By, by the way, what do you think of my shirt? I love that you shirt. You like this? The other question I have is, do the guys over at the bookstore know that there's two people that host the show? <laughs> well, speaking of the bookstore, these are the uh, the 2022 BYU Patriotic Tees. You can get yours at the BYU store, uh, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sporting. I'm, uh, I'm the model today. That's a nice look. It is. Go get your T-shirt. You wear it to Stadium of Fire. Fit there right in. And then, uh, then we got a long, hot July right after. Looks good. Th- yeah, thank you. And my wife, by the way, has said you can wear it today. When you bring it home, it's mine. <laughs> so uh, my wife has already claimed this. The season moves fast. Yes, it certainly, it season most certainly does. All right, here's your show lineup. Uh, what were the storylines from Media Day that stood out to Dave and I? We'll also be joined by Riley Nelson. He'll drop by and give us his thoughts on Media Day. And then also not running away from expectations this season. Plus, Steve Young says the Cougars should swing for the fences. Heading into the Big 12, you will hear from the BYU legend how about we bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines let's start with Tom Homo BYU athletic director yesterday confirming the Cougars are going to play nine conference games in the Big 12 that leaves him with three non-conference games as a result Stanford has canceled four games with the Cougars slated for years to come Uh, games were set for 25 26 28 and 35 the Cardinal will Post BYU Thanksgiving weekend this coming season, and they will return to Provo in 2031. BYU 0-2 against the Cardinal, and despite the proximity, they've only played twice. I know it's crazy to think that it's only been that few of times. And 2004 was the last. It's kind of a fun rivalry, but it's not going to come to fruition like like we thought. But we go there, they come here, and then we move on. According to Pro Football Focus's early draft list, Blake Freeland is the fourth-ranked offensive tackle. Freeland is joined by two other Big 12 offensive tackles, one from Oklahoma, one from Baylor. It's always a good time to bring up the fun fact about Blake Freeland has only allowed one sack over the last two seasons. He's what uh, you would call a good football player. 
The great Shimmer for Dead has finally arrived. He has signed on, and his new boss is Floyd Mayweather, the boxer. We all called that. The money team. That's what Floyd's thing is. It's always been that way, and now he's got into the basketball tournament where this field of 64, the winning team, gets a million bucks. So Jimmer is in, and he's teamed up with the money team. The good news for Jimmer is Floyd's not going to play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he can box, but he, he is not going to play, but he's back in that team. Who'd have thought? Jimmer Fredette and the money team. Floyd Mayweather. Hey, there's been uh, quite a few connections from the state of Utah. Obviously, Jimmer and Floyd. Floyd Mayweather was at a uh, jazz game sitting courtside earlier this year. Probably. He's got nothing to do. He's got, so, he just look, goes to one event after the look, other. Look, he's, he's, he's a big fan of the state of Utah. Uh, we're big fans of Connor Mance. Uh, he was named to the NCAA Division I men's track and field and cross-country academic All-America team. Also, congratulations to Courtney Wayman, BYU Steeplechase National Championship. She signed a pro deal with Swiss Shoe Company on athletics. Fantastic. It's a big weekend for a handful of Cougars and former Cougars at the U.S. Outdoor Track and Field Championships, including Courtney, uh, Anna Camp Bennett, Whitney Orton Morgan, Ashton Reiner, Connor Mance, there's a running theme here, national champions. That's right. Uh, the five and the current group of collegiate champions from BYU uh, that are formers are at the USA Outdoor Track and Field Championships in Eugene, Oregon. This is the same track where uh, where uh, Wayman yes. ran the fastest time in, a, in America. Um, top three finishers of these events go on to the U.S. Uh, World Track and Field Championships. That's in a month from now, back at the same track. So if you're doing good in Eugene, you just roll with that, and then you start talking about Olympians. So. Have you ever seen that venue where this whole is is taking place in Eugene? It is unreal. Yeah. If you ever get a chance, if you're up in that area and get a chance to drive by and see it, it is phenomenal. We wish the Cougars and the former Cougs the best. Maybe they'll let you maybe run a few laps if you're interested. Yeah, you know, I, I, it, they would be untimed laps. <laughs> yeah, of course. I, I wouldn't want that yeah. to do that. But. All right, all rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. With yesterday's BYU Football Media Day officially in the books, it's uh, time to look back on a jam-packed day of football information. Man, we soaked it up and we loved it. Uh, with big ticket items like when's BYU going to join a P5 conference or maybe when are the Cougars going to finally play Notre Dame? Those questions have already been answered. Dave, I'll ask you, what jumped out to you about BYU Media Day? There was a, an aura of confidence of uh, this is a great independent schedule to finish up with. And then, and then it's P5 and access to everything everybody else has, as opposed to we're going to play a big independent and then hope we go undefeated or something happens where we get invited to the party. I think it was the first time, obviously, in all of the media days we've had where was, there was the uh, resolution of uh, the big time is coming, so let's make this season big because of the opponents that are that are on this schedule uh, I, I just felt like there was uh, there was a calmness of yeah 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 that's that's where we're going with a little smile on everyone's face it, it really was it was a different media day than we've seen in the last couple of years because there is a sense of the, the future is not so unknown anymore. Now, there's certainly things that, you know, you're still still got a lot of work to do over the next year. But, you know, th those big questions have been answered and now it's working towards those. So I, I agree with you. There was certainly a, a different feel to yesterday in terms of, uh, of news and notes. I, I would say probably the biggest um, news item that came out of it was uh, Big 12 conference games. And Tom Homo uh, confirmed exactly how many games BYU and the rest of the new Big 12 will play in terms of conference games. That first year we'll have nine games and it's going to be either five at home or four on the road, five, or five at home and four on the road or vice versa. And uh, it'll be soon enough before we figure that out. So, Dave, that was probably maybe the, the, the biggest news that came out of it in terms of, of things, you know, questions that maybe needed to be answered. You already mentioned in the, in the headlines, uh, and it wasn't something that was brought up at Media Day, but it, it, the, the news came down yesterday about the four games with Stanford uh, that are going to be going away. Uh, I know one of the other the news items was, you know, Tom talked about how uh, it's not done yet, but they are getting closer to a season opening game oh. in 2023 because right now there's only two games on that schedule. And I think uh, it's going to be a team like a Sam Houston State or a Tulsa. There's only there's only a small group of teams that are even possible who have openings still 
for uh, for next season. And so, uh, you know, it's not it's not going to be Alabama, you know, and, and it doesn't have to be. But uh, it's going to allow BYU really to be in a position to win their first two home games, go to Arkansas, see what happens there, and then, then you run the table with nine uh, games in the Big 12. Um, but the, the days of uh, access to playing Stanford over Thanksgiving, right. that's, that's not going to happen. And those games were canceled. Tom was uh, – I was with him when those games were canceled. He goes, yep, we're just waiting on them to do it because that's, that's, that's how this is going to go. Uh, and I, I think, uh, you know, I think we're interested in the opener. It, it really doesn't matter who the team is per se. It's the opener in the first Big 12 season. And that's why, you know, I think everyone's like, well, who are we opening with? Tennessee was going to be awesome. Right, yeah. That was, no gonna be, that was going to be so good and such a dangerous game for Tennessee. They wrote a check for $2 million <laughs> and said, we'll come visit Utah in the offseason. We are not bringing our team. And that's too bad, but that's the reality of they can't afford to have a loss. Right, that's true. Look, and then that's, that's what the, the schedule that we as, as BYU fans and media members – have experienced over the last decade plus that that just that's it that is now a thing of the past you know being able to to have some early games to where you can get some victories and and maybe even as important as getting the wins heading into your conference play staying healthy heading into those games and speaking of health I think that was something else that stood out was was for the most part this team is going to be healthy heading into the season. That was something else that a lot of people talked about. You know, guys like Isaac Rex. I know that uh, we, um, Aaron Roderick mentioned that he, he's, he's certainly hopeful that Isaac Rex will be ready to go for game one. I, I think, Dave, one of the things that really stood out to me from a big picture standpoint was, look, expectations for this team are high, and there's a reason for it. They're really good. One of the things I really liked was this team seemed to lean into that, and, and it was not a boastful type situation they they know how how good they are they know the talent they have but they also know this team is putting in the work to be good I like that they didn't run away from those expectations and I think the health of the team fueled that that's the undercurrent of of the day and that's why that's why they lean into those expectations yeah. that's why they, they speak with confidence because right now they're all healthy sure uh, and and Rex who was still limping around a little bit um He's going to be ready for game one. That's, that's the hope, that's, yeah. That's what Aaron Roderick said, so we'll see about that. But um, we had Peyton Wilgar and, and Keenan Peely on uh, State of the Program. Peely next week gets the all clear on his ACL rehab. How huge is that? Uh, and Wilgar is going to be all clear from his two shoulder surgeries uh, for camp. And, and those two guys were the guys. Uh, and then this Ben Bywater, here comes Peely with a sack, Peely had 17 tackles against Arizona. He was huge against Arizona State and then lost for the season against Utah. Wilgar right there kind of had to switch roles with Peely out, and his productivity with sacks and, and things changed because now he's in a different position. And then here comes Ben Bywater, a walk-on, right. who ends up leading the team in tackles. We saw him in the springs, huge. He And now, now all those three are together with Max Tooley and Pepe Tanavasa has, has come back to the linebacking group. So you got five right there, all with starting experience. And, um, and, and so why aren't they walking around going, man, we can't wait. We can't wait. They feel good, and they know they are good. Yeah. Um, and, and, the, and when we played that bowl game, none of those guys were playing, except for, for Bywater, who, who was an Iron Man sure. after all that, um, and it's especially in those positions. So that's just one area of the team, and I, and I think that health undercurrent permeates throughout. Uh, there's no foot problem for Jaron Hall. Didn't play in the bowl game. Uh, there's, there's Chris Brooks, who's healthy in the backfield to run. Puka Nakua is healthy. Gunnar Romney's healthy. Gunnar missed some games last year. Um, Keanu Hill, healthy. That offensive line, beast and healthy. Yes. So, and then you move to the defense, you get the same story uh, in the secondary and the guys up front. So I, I think health was a huge undercurrent of why do these guys feel so good? Because they feel because, good. Yeah, they feel good. And they, yeah, I, I just like the fact that, because a lot of times you're like, well, we, 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 don't, we don't want to acknowledge that there's expectations because we, we don't want to put it in players' minds that they've arrived because we still want them to work. And that's just, that's just not the DNA of this team. That's not the DNA of this coaching staff that they've implemented. And I, I just I liked hearing it. And look, and I'm not breaking any news here. This is, this is common sense. But this BYU defense, its success will be determined by its front seven. And I loved hearing from Elisa Tuiaki when he said that 
The defensive line, which has taken criticism over the last couple of years, and obviously he's been hurt with injuries as well. We talked about the linebacking core. Defensive line's been the same. He says he feels like right now the defensive line is three deep, that anybody on the three deep he can put in, and he feels comfortable with them getting reps. I love to hear that. Hey, when they were healthy, uh, Utah scored 16 points, Arizona State, or maybe 17. Arizona State, same thing. Arizona, 16 points. Washington State, with their starting quarterback, on the road, scored 19 points. They did enough when healthy to beat all of those teams in the Pac-12. And when unhealthy, they had to beat USC 35-31. to 31. They had to score some yep. more points. Um, I, I, I like what, what Tuiaki's got going, and I like the areas of concern where he wants to get better. All right, our question of the day is this. What was the one thing that jumped out to you during BYU Media Day? Let's get to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. We go to Instagram for our first response. At Noble Dunn uh, says, as frustrating and annoying as independence was sometimes, yesterday helped show why it paid off and got us to a position to be the front runners for a P5 invite. It, it really was a, a celebration of a lot of hard work that now it's, it's looking ahead to what you know is going to be reality in a little over a year. And what's cool is no one knew it was coming. They just hoped. Yeah, just sure. Work really hard and hope. There was zero sign that they were going to go to a P5 until Oklahoma and Texas just decided they were going to leave. One big domino fell. SEC. And then all of a sudden, we're the first one in. But until then, nothing. And you just grind it and grind it and hope. And so when that day arrives and you look back and go, you know, here we are. It's just extra sweet. Uh, this from at Twiggier Stone, and uh, he says Aaron Roderick's mustache. <laughs> he says, I think that was the reason the offense is clicking. Opposing defenses look at the sideline, and when they see his mustache, their first thought is, how can we defend an offense run by a man with such a glorious stash? Look, I, uh, I'm going to break a little news here. Aaron Roderick's mustache has convinced me. I'm going on vacation tomorrow. I, th I think twice before. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I am committing think, for the summer. Think twice. I'm, I'm, I'm going to become text stash your guy. Wife first. Text, I, text your wife first. I am, I am going to become stash guy. So when I return, <laughs> because when I, the first day I'm back, I'm, I'm on this show. I will have a mustache. Okay, look, before you, before you completely buy in on that, <laughs> remember the thing Jerem once did? He said he'd shave his head if BYU beat yes. the Yeah, he had to shave his head. I'm going to grow a mustache. we all paid the price <laughs> for him shaving his I'm head. committing. I am committing for the summer to have a mustache. Aaron Roderick's it's a, glorious it's a Roderick mustache. Is it a mustache or is it going to be um, like the volleyball coach, Olmstead's mustache? Again, a really good stash. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are you are you okay. are you saying no. Sean Olmstead's mustache no. is not good? Because no, I got to see it up close I'm and I thought it was it. I'm just fantastic. Saying, I'm just wondering what pattern you're following. Okay. Are you following Olmstead or Roderick? Look, this, when I come back, stash. you're going to be like, "Hey, you're going to need those glasses because you're going to go." Is that Tom Selleck? <laughs> That's exactly. <laughs> okay. That's exactly what I'm going to think when I see you <laughs> next. All right. Well, good luck with that. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe uh, you and I'll be doing the show, and you'll and you'll get to see it in all of its. Glory. Can't wait. I'm, in fact, I volunteer right now for that. For <laughs> okay. That All right. All Let's... right. Coming up, uh, did uh, did Shep here, the new mustache man, <laughs> find a replacement for the cougar tail? And Riley Nelson joins us next. What jumped out to him about yesterday's BYU Football Media Day? That's next. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Bodyguards. Protection for a life worth living.
Kentucky Couture Luxurious Blanket. Getting cozy with family and friends. A gift for everyone. Minky Couture, official luxury blanket of BYU Athletics. Follow the ups and downs of elite young gymnasts and an exclusive behind the scenes look as they twist, flip, and bounce their way to the podium. See the commitment, effort, and mindset it takes for these competitors to rule their sport on Gym Stars, on BYU TV, or on the free app. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU Sports Nation has its own YouTube channel. Get all the interviews by subscribing to and share the BYU Sports Nation YouTube channel. We are live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play -play alongside Dave McCann. My name is Jason Shepard and uh, happy to have our next guest on the program. Saw him uh, yesterday. It's always good when you get to see Riley Nelson uh, in the flesh. Uh, he was at Media Day yesterday doing some stuff with Greg Rubel on BYU Radio. And he joins us now here on BYU Sports Nation, former Cougar quarterback, current radio analyst. Riley, like I said, it was good to see you yesterday. How are things? It's always good to be seen. And, yeah, being down there just reminds me that uh, I'm not down there enough. You know, I make it down there quite frequently, but it's never enough to return back home and uh, and be around all the guys and, and see all of you, and especially when we get to talk ball. There's no, Well, there's no question about that. I've always said more Riley, that more Riley Nelson is always good. There's no downside to more Riley Nelson. Riley, is there – are you the most beaten up BYU quarterback in school history? Uh, oh. Taysom had yeah. some uh, – Everyone seemed to get dinged up, but I just know you finished the, your career with, like, I think it was a broken back. Uh, yeah, and then, and then torn, so it was finally revealed what Jaron's injuries were last year. I tore the cartilage that connects his ribs. I had that same injury. Uh, I actually had it twice. I had it my junior and my senior year. But once I finally was feeling better from the back, I, I had that in the San Jose State game, which was – our second to last game my senior year and it's hard to say like obviously the guys that went on to the I do not I will never try and compare uh, you know injuries and and you know bones sticking out and cartilage tears to, to guys like Jim or Steve or those guys that had long careers in the pro that's a completely different level but um, at BYU you know my deal was I never like I always all my injuries like brought me to the edge but not enough to knock me out like I'd say probably unquestionably taste him but all of his were like season enders right I were like oh you know miss a week and come back it just it more but you're playing at 80 percent so you're more of a sitting duck to take more punishment but <laughs> given the chance to do it all over again I wouldn't have changed a thing yeah uh, you're a warrior you you uh, you gave it all that's yeah, for sure that's a it's a it's a good uh, it's a good phrase to describe you so Riley you know Dave and I in the last segment we went over the, the news items from yesterday's media day and our takeaways what stood out to you from BYU football media day yesterday the um so after doing a lot and being a back when I was a player, a participant, and then now uh, being a member of the media and being involved in in probably a half dozen of these now, uh, not the thing, it was like a calm or it's like a sense of um, self, like self esteem. Basically, the hype. The, there was a lot of talk about all the potential for the season, but it all was felt backed by work that's been done previously. Where before, it's like they're making comments about how good they think they're going to be or the success that they think they're going to have, kind of based on like a hope and a prayer. It's kind of like, oh well, we're really excited about this new thing and that new thing. And now it's like, listen, we were really good last year. We know we're going to be really good this year. The question is, are we going to go from really good to great? And elite. That's what we're after, and that's what we're putting in the work to achieve. That for me was uh, there was just a different tone where guys felt secure in saying, We know we're going to be good. The question is not that. The question is, Are we going to be elite? Which makes me really excited. One thing I noticed with quarterback Jaron Hall as he gets ready for what could be his, his final season, he's got two years of eligibility remaining, but there was an aura about him of, uh, I don't know if it's confidence. Um, Comfort, comfortability, comfortability. There, he just seemed to be very in a good place for a, for a guy with a big schedule ahead. What did you notice of Jerem? I I was able to catch him like off air, just 
you know, a couple of BYU quarterbacks chatting over in the corner. And I'll, I'll be honest, guys, last year when they were saying it's a quarterback competition, I, I didn't really – I, and keep in mind, I didn't have as much access. I wasn't at practice day in, day out. I didn't see how they divided up reps. But I was like, Let, they're doing this because, you know, Zach's leaving and they need to replace him and they need to say. But, like, it's obvious that it's Jaron. Like, Jaron's the guy. He told me that it was a full-on – like, he had he had no, uh, uh, like, assurances. He – it was complete blank slate as to whether or not he was going to win the job last year. So – for him, he just said that not having to deal with a competition within his own quarterback room has allowed him to focus on other elements of his game, which has brought an even – he's already a very naturally, like, poised and collected player and individual, and it's brought an, an added level of that. And then one thing – one comment that A-Rod made that I liked was, okay, now he's not competing uh, with the other quarterbacks in the room, but he's got competitors across the landscape of college football – that by the names of Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, Caleb Williams, like the who's who of the top quarterbacks at the top schools, that's who Jaron Hall's gunning for. And so to be able to take his, to elevate his sights for his own QB room, to go, you know, be mentioned in the same breath as those guys, uh, really exciting. Riley Nelson joining us here on BYU Sports Nation. And look, expectations are high for Jaron Hall. They're high for this team, and rightfully so. This team is really, really good and should do really great things this year. And one of the things, Riley, that I really liked yesterday and, and quite frankly stood out to me was that this team, and not in a cocky way, they leaned into those expectations. They were not hiding from that. Do you like hearing the teams lean into those expectations? I do because I have faith in Kalani. So I was, um, I, I, as, as the coaches were doing their, you know, it was the open kind of round table and they were each giving interviews and we were allowed to kind of go from table to table and listen, kind of drop in on what was being asked and answered. And Preston Hadley was asked a question about, you know, it's one of, I, I don't know the exact number, but it's one of very few staffs across college football that returns everybody. And they've made some very key additions in the form of analysts and, and other people on the staff. They've grown the staff, but they return each of the offensive, defensive staff and head coaches, which is a which is a rare luxury in today's college football. And Preston Hadley was asked why that was, and he's just like, he goes, I got one word for you, Kalani. So the fact that the players, the reason why I'm okay with the players talking that is because it is real. Like what Kalani preaches and the way that he builds the program and he's player friendly and he gives them freedom and all that stuff. But it, the only reason that he can give freedom is because he's built upon a foundation of like, guys, there is no entitlement here. Everything is only done through hard work and dedication, focus to your craft. Once that's done, then yeah, we can have fun and we can be brothers and, and we can have more freedom, but it's that confidence in Kalani's ability to establish what, the product on the field has already proven uh, that these guys aren't all taught. They are all stake, no sizzle. And on, in, a, in a forum like Media Day, where you're given the opportunity to talk about yourself, I was glad to see that they don't shy away. They don't give that faux, you know, self-deprecating, that faux humility. They're like, yeah, we know we're good. The question is, are we going to be great? And that kind of mentality heading into a season with this much returning talent, uh, it's hard for me. BYU fans, including myself, already have a hard enough time tempering expectations. But after yesterday, throw that out the window. Let's go, baby. <laughs> I was uh, driving into the show today, and I, and I was reminded that we are in the entertainment business. On this end of the camera and down on the field and on the microphone. And um, we get so serious about so many things. Certainly our fan base does. Um, but at, in the entertainment business, and you look at the schedule coming up and, and, and everything you just said a moment ago, the word fun comes to mind when we get into August and then this schedule finally finally kicks off. And that's, that's what it's all about uh, for, for all of us and, and for the fans. Uh, and this is a very fun schedule with a good team. I love so many elements about it. Um, you know, you start off, can we go event, you know, Jared Hall returning three seasons later or two seasons, depending on how you do your math, but basically can he avenge that 2019 law back in Raymond James stadium, the house of the bucks against the South Florida bulls. And then, you know, you coming back home and then you head all of a sudden to Austin stadium, which is one of, 
you know, it's the rowdiest. And after the beating that BYU gave the Pac-12 last year, right, is or are they relying on Oregon to avenge that loss? And then you look for at the end of September, that first week of October with that Notre Dame game, guys, which like I'm not a player anymore. But the fact that those that those dudes and look, we kind of those that know knew that it was coming when we did the two for one with them. We already kind of knew that they were going to bail and find any way possible to not make it to Provo. So I'm OK with the compromise them in Vegas. I just really want to send those dudes home with an L. I just <laughs> some about it, man. I don't know if it's the shiny gold helmets or the fact that they were ducking, you know, coming into Lavelle Edwards Stadium. That would be so sweet. And then. You know, you mix in some old Mountain West rivalries with Utah State and Wyoming that we're probably not going to see ever again, or, or at least very intermittently, like, you know, decades between games. And then to finish off um, with the September, uh, like, especially in Palo Alto, where I think Stanford's on the rebound. And anytime you go in to play a David Shaw team, I mean, it's just littered with excitement week in, week out. I can't, I, I'm just tickled the fact that I get to be on the call week in and week out and watch this team prove all the things that we think they can be and that they are working towards being on the field in the fall. Even with all of the positive hype, no coach is ever going to feel like their team is a finished product, that they that there's not a place for improvement. For you, with roughly five weeks from the start of camp, where's the biggest area of improvement for you or maybe the biggest unknown heading into the year? Um. The health of the linebackers, those dudes took a beating last year. Well, basically, not just the linebackers, it's the front seven. Uh, I feel pretty good on the offensive line and uh, feel pretty good about Brooks uh, coming in and replace. I, you know, I don't know if he's going to be the only one, but I feel pretty good about someone from that running back room emerging. Obviously not being Tyler Algier, but, but serving that role in the offense. It's an embarrassment of riches uh, on the outside. And, of course, we already uh, – meaning uh, – between tight ends and wide receivers. And then we've already talked about Jaron. So for me, most of my questions are on the defense. And this defense is the core of it is the front seven. It's how good it can that D line and those linebackers stop the run and create in coach in Greg and I's interview with coach Tuyaki on, on behind the mic yesterday, he went on probably a five minute monologue. It was great. Go. I, I encourage fans who are interested in the technical aspect of the game, go back and listen to it. Uh, where he talks about, yeah, interceptions are great and and all these things that the fans look at, but it all starts, interceptions and sacks and all that are great, but it all starts with the guys up front doing the boring jobs, doing the non-sexy jobs. So um, with the, the front four that kind of at times, especially when you look at the ball game, UAB kind of came right at them, hit them right in the mouth, and I don't know that they were ready to kind of answer the challenge. I think that they recognize that are going to respond. And then that linebacking core that just – kind of wore, did their best to battle week in, week out, but wore down. Can those guys return to full health? And can those uh, can the front four answer the challenge that they were kind of left with towards the end of the season last year and really be a hallmark of this BYU defense? That's the biggest thing I'm excited to have. That's the biggest question I, I am to have answered and the biggest thing to see these players prove. Five weeks now until camp. That's not very long. Uh, as you think back to your playing days, what goes on between now and when the players report um, to get themselves ready for the season away from from the coaching staff? So uh, at least from a physical standpoint, you're, it switches more from – so uh, winter conditioning is almost 100% about muscle and a little bit about keeping general conditioning. Then spring is about competition, kind of position development, getting a feel for your squad. Then you come out of spring and you still have a heavy period where maybe it's not as much like like building muscle, but it's about explosion. It's still very focused on, on lifting and getting stronger and getting bigger. Now you start heading, you know, end of June into July, and it becomes far more about speed, conditioning, and position mastery. So it's more nuanced. It's more about uh, time, you know, Guys spending time together as position groups, kind of getting some one-on-ones, was getting things more down in football, maybe a little bit more time in film room doing that. You're still looking at your bodies. You're still trying to, you know, make sure your body is finely tuned, ready for the grind of camp, but you bring the volume down, but maybe keep the intensity up. So, so you have a little bit less wear and tear, but you're keeping your ability to peak perform. Um, and, and that, and then finally heading into camp, it's about taking a big, deep breath, decompressing, spending time away from the game with family and friends so that when you report to camp, you are just chomping at the bit, ready to go. 
Hey, I wanted to ask you something that uh, that was uh, part of the news cycle over the last week, uh, and it's quarterback related for BYU. What did you make of Jay Keeps becoming the personal quarterback coach for uh, for Russell Wilson with the Denver Broncos? It, it's pretty cool to think because you have you have heaps in that situation. We obviously know what John Beck has done with Zach Wilson and a bunch of other quarterbacks. Max Hall does stuff. Ty Detmer's done stuff. What, what what did you what did you make of that news and and sort of the the prominence of BYU quarterback? Uh, from a coaching perspective? It just proves that QBU, QBU of the 80s and early 90s did not go anywhere. The, the dynamics of college football shifted where basically the Davey, the Davey O'Brien Awards, the Heisman Trophy winners, you know, those are going, those just simply aren't going to non-Power 5 quarterbacks. They aren't. I can't, I don't know if you guys know the last non-P5 guy to win one, but it just, it just doesn't happen anymore. Now that BYU's back in the P5, we're more in contention. But that shifted, and that was outside BYU's control. But what it shows is that QBU never ceased to exist. We don't get just dudes that can throw the rock around. These are guys who have dedicated their life. They love the game of football. They dedicate their life to the game of football. They're darn good at the game of football. And even in the case of Jake, you know, like circumstances around his career, maybe it didn't play out on the field like he, but but that doesn't take away from the fact that the dude loves ball, that the dude knows how to, um, how to coach ball, right, that he – he developed mastery of the game to be able to pass on to the next generation and to have that recognized by what, by what is going to be a future Hall of Fame quarterback. And then, you know, John Beck was involved yesterday. You look at what Max is doing down in Arizona, building his program. You look what Doman did as his stint, you know, being a, a coordinator and a coach. Like, honestly, guys, it's making me feel bad that I, that I put a headset on and talking to a mic for my contribution <laughs> <laughs> for Paul's playing career BYU. But, but no, I mean, it's just what BYU, it, it, it's the legacy see we are still seeing the you know the fruits of the legacy that Lavelle left which means anybody that comes through B any quarterback that comes through BYU is not your average guy he's a guy who's got something special to it and we're seeing it manifest in all sorts of post-career ways Riley Nelson on with us on this Southpaw Thursday because Steve Young's coming up next you know? hey there's nothing wrong with that hey, Southpaw. hey Riley if you uh, if you were on the field behind this line and with these receivers and uh, with Brooks behind you, how many um, how many reps do you think you could do before you tap out? <laughs> yeah, I think I can make it through at least a quarter and a half. All right, that's pretty good. That's pretty and that's, good. Hey, listen, that's not because the pro would break down or anything like that. That's because I couldn't help myself, but I'd get out running around, and then basically <laughs> after maybe one or two hits, the you know the thirty five year old body give in. Yeah, yeah, those, the younger body takes those a little bit better. Yeah, they just, the they mind, seem to, they seem the to mind back is willing, better. but. The, the heart and mind is willing, but the flesh is weak. And I think that would become very apparent the first time I tried to leave the pocket and make one of those old plays I was famous for. All right, brother. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Great insights thanks, as Riley. always. Look forward to listening to you all fall. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me on, fellas. Coming up, speaking of Southpaw Thursday, Steve Young with a lot of interesting things to say about independence and where BYU goes from here. Hey, and more quarterbacks. Can Eli Manning pull off the punky QB look? This is BYU Sports Nation. Welcome to a partnership where customer experience comes first. It's our focus. It's your expectation. We provide support to those that go the extra mile for all of us. Supplying products, training, and service for generations. Learn more at BradyIndustries.com. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today.
Summer is back, and that means BYU TV's Super Girls of Summer are too. And they're more super than ever. Brave, persistent, bold, and heroic. Be there for all the fun, the action, and the reactions. Figured out how to make your world a better place. I totally feel like Superwoman. Watch the Super Girls of Summer all season long on BYU TV or on the free app. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. This is BYU Sports Nation to interact with the show and get great content throughout the day. Follow us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. He's Dave. I'm Jason. It's time to whip it. Cougar Whip Around is presented by Marisk, your integrated container logistics company enabling global trade for a growing world. Tonight's the NBA draft, and the last time BYU had someone drafted was Jimmer in 2011. How long until the Cougars get another player drafted? Mm, that's a good question. Look, there's obviously no way of knowing, but you do have some very high caliber players coming in. The highest is actually leaving on his mission Maybe was it? It was yesterday, correct? I believe. So. Colin Chandler, uh, Sierra Leone, is on his way. Like that. So it it, let's be. say if Colin's the best chance right now in the program, you're probably what four or five years away from that. Yeah. Maybe so four or five years. Maybe. What do you think? I think you're right. I think Colin Chandler is the next, and I, I think Mark Hope believes that too. Yeah. And uh, BYU fans should be excited to get him. Very out. excited. Eli Manning put on the headband and sunglasses when he was hanging out with Jim McMahon. That's right, Eli Manning in town. But who wears the headband and the sunglasses better? What do you think, Dave? Uh, no one uh, beats McMahon on the headband or the sunglasses. But I'm, I'm as equally entertained watching the Manning brothers post football as I was when they were playing football. They, uh, they have they carved out quite a post career career. Yeah. They, they're hilarious. And I was over at the stadium when all that was going on. Did you hang out with Eli? I didn't hang out, but the entourage of, of uh, the shooting for Eli's place, uh, you know, it was an army of cameramen. I'm like, okay, that's that's a big time day for Eli and McMahon and, and Ty. That, uh, that episode will get huge ratings here in the state of Utah. Absolutely will. Ohio State gets a trademark on the, like the Ohio State. What should BYU file to get a trademark on? On the word the? Seriously, they get the word the. Uh, yeah, I, but they say the because it's the yeah, Ohio okay, State true. University. Yes, okay, true. Uh, I don't, I mean, I don't know. It, you said something earlier. Is Cougar Tail is trademark. Cougar Tail is trademark. That yeah. is trademark. Yeah, that's all big business for BYU. Really? Okay. Here's what I, I don't know. How about, uh, I don't know. If it's not used a whole lot elsewhere, but what about Lavelle? Can you trademark? Trademark like, Lavelle? Keep, make sure nobody can, can do anything with. Name? I don't know. But like, just make sure nobody can do anything with Lavelle. Trade honor code. Trademark honor code. Yeah, I thought of that one too. Now, more schools should use one. How about this one? Arch Manning. This was just announced just a few minutes ago. Arch Manning, the nephew of Peyton and Eli, son of Cooper, announces his commitment to the University of Texas. Makes it interesting with BYU joining the Big 12. He is for the class of 2023. We obviously know that's when all these new schools go in. Will BYU play Arch Manning as a member of the Big 12? Big win for former Cougar quarterback Steve Sarkeesian. It's quite possible. They've got Quinn Ewers, a redshirt freshman, who's supposed to be the next great thing. And then you got the next great Manning, if, if that's going to work out for him. Uh, and then Sarkeesian will have a decision. Do I play McMahon or do I play Wilson? <laughs> <laughs> you know, on paper, that's what those guys look like. I hope BYU gets a chance to play Texas twice, and then whoever's the quarterback, but it could be Archman. Well, look, I, I, I'm expecting it. I can't imagine Manning committing to a school and not having part of his commitment be I'm starting day one. I'd like we to hear about see. his NIL. <laughs> All right, so you sent out a tweet yesterday. Um, thoughts on these donuts from Media Day. Is this a better option than the Cougar Tail? Did you see these donuts? I, no, I, I could not believe them. how realistic the, those legit looked like hands. I, it was it was very realistic, and I did not get one of them. I did not eat one of them. But I cannot tell you how many people said they would actually have that over a Cougar Tail because some people aren't maple fans. Um, I'm not a maple fan. I, I'm not a huge maple donut fan myself, so I would choose the hand donut. But wouldn't you be biting the hand that feeds you? Okay, you've been waiting this entire show to say that. And earlier this morning from our staff meeting. Uh, I'd, 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 I'd eat that. I'd, I won't eat a, a cougar tail, but put some chocolate on the 
Put some chocolate on the fingernails there. I think you got, I think you got something. <gasps> yeah, that doesn't. Let sound me tell. Right. No, but you, you may have something there. A little, little chocolate on the fingernails and the, uh, seriously. Whoever made those, I don't know if that was on campus, if that was an outside entity. Send well some over. done. Send some over. Well done on those donuts. Coming up, a self-congratulatory rise and shout. And why is Steve Young high on BYU Big 12 expectations? This is BYU Sports Nation. This is where we dominate. Our playground. Place of business. This is our promised land, where we seek to find ourselves, and we're here to make sure the spaces our best prove themselves on appear how they should. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. I know what it's like to be overlooked to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. Accidents don't just happen nine to five. They happen when you least expect them. The team at Siegfried and Jensen is here for you 24 seven. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour. Really here for you. No matter when you call us, you'll speak to a real person and have access to the same expertise and personal attention as always. And get the legal help you need when you need it. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour, 24 seven. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Hey, Heartland fans, join us for 14 seasons commercial free on the free BYU TV app. Since the accident that took her mother's life, a part of her lives on through Amy and the gifts they share. Grow together with their family as they work through all their hopes and their heartaches. Be there for every moment, every struggle, every triumph. BYU TV has the only free app where you can watch Heartland without commercials. Download it today. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Join us tomorrow for a BYU Sports Nation special. BYU football, a history of offensive innovation. We look back at how BYU has been at the forefront of the offensive explosion in football. Watch tomorrow, noon Eastern, right here on BYU TV and on BYU Radio. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation, live with you on a Thursday from Studio B. Well, in preparation for Media Day, the great Steve Young sat down with BYU TV to talk about his thoughts on independence and what the expectations for the Cougars are in the Big 12. Right at the top of his thought process, uh, BYU should be proud of what they got done this last decade outside of a conference. Let's listen. We've hung in there. We've, you know, our greatest feat, acrobatic miracle feat, is that we've hung in there and uh, made a space to go beat uh, Nebraska and, and Texas. I mean, we've just, we've gone around the country and people, people fear us in that we don't know what, watch out for BYU. So in that way, uh, independence has been hard and nothing to like, you know, tell everyone, oh, that was, you know, that's the, that's the best place to be in the world. No, it's a hard place to be. And I give Tom, I give, the whole athletic department and President Worthen, it's, it's hazard pay to be independent. And so where we, what we've come from before, from the last, in the last 30, 40 years, is that we're, we're more established, you know? Uh, and we hung in there in a really tough environment, trying to bang the door down on a Power Five conference. And we just kept banging. And I think that's something to be very proud of. Well, and look, BYU should be very proud of the fact that through all the ups and downs over the decade plus, uh, as Steve said, they hung in there. They, they did what they needed to do to be ready when the opportunity presented itself, and BYU absolutely should feel proud of that. I like what he said. We're done with hazard pay. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, Steve went on to say early in the uh, in the Big 12, expectations from sport to sport vary, but there's only one mentality that you're supposed to have going forward. You know that there are, there are, you know some of the Olympic sports were going to be great, volleyball, uh, soccer. We're going to be we're going to be right in the mix. Uh, basketball is going to be fits and starts. Like we'll we'll probably be middle of the pack, I would suspect. Uh, and football, I, I think that we have to think of ourselves as leaders in the Big 12. We have to, in our minds, that's who we are. And we have to recruit that way, we have to play that way, we have to coach that way. And obviously there's a lot of challenges right now with everyone with uh, name, image, and likeness. So we're gonna, it's the Wild West, but we need to, and football is, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna lead the, pack, the Big 12. That's what we're gonna do. I'd kinda like to have him at quarterback. I wouldn't mind having I'd like to have him back at quarterback. And I love the attitude. You have to yeah. go in. You can't tell me that the other three that are going in with BYU don't feel the same way. They should. Absolutely. All right, now for fans. How should fans feel? Here's more from Steve. We have the elements. Coach, offensive coordinator, locked in, contracts, proven recruiters. Now with the Big 12 behind them, we don't get beat. Uh, we should be able to start to bring in uh, even uh, better recruits. And we have history on our side. We have a expectation of how we're gonna throw the ball. We're gonna throw it. We're gonna, that's who we are. We, we, everyone knows who we are. I think there's some, so something to that. Like, what, who is BYU? We know BYU, we know their coach, we know what they're gonna do. Um, and so I think that that comes into the Big 12 with a, there are gonna be a lot of expectations. And I think we should, we should, we should, uh, Step into those shoes. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna go win the Big Twelve, and that's how we're gonna roll. We do some with that duck, Henri <laughs> Duck. You know what we should, what we should do is put the theme to Patton underneath. Uh, uh, Quite the motivator, orders because it's like, yeah, let's 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 do that. What he said. Yeah. Well, look, and and Steve obviously, Steve is part of BYU's glory days, and so for him to be able to be a part of that part of BYU's history. And to see how excited he is and the expectations he has going in, you should get everybody excited. Steve is not, not only that, he is the number one former Cougar athlete. That There's no one that tops him in yeah, the world. Yeah, no, agreed. For credibility and enthusiasm and love. They all have it, but but he's he's up here. And we're all down here. <laughs> and so it's fun to listen to him. You're like, yeah, let's do that. When Steve let's talks, go. you listen. Yeah. He speaks the truth. <laughs> He speaks it according to Steve. Yeah, well, that's and true. And we all read that. We're like, that must be how it is. That's right. All right, coming up, the elite voice of the day. And a rise and shout out to some hardworking individuals. This is BYU Sports Nation. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new Frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. <laughs> Uh-oh. Do you not know the groom's name? I missed it on our first date, and it's way too late to ask. Whenever you experience something funny, the first thing you want to do is, like, share it with your loved ones. Seeing that comedy, like, helped us do things, that we want to use that to help other people in a way. We had one kid whose make-a-wish was to come to Studio C. It made me be, like, these goofy sketches uh, mean a lot to people. Paul Brandt is laying his guitar aside and picking up a hammer. There actually are things that can be done to help people in situations like this. This is our <laughs> house for real. I don't think you can ever drink too much. As the receivers become the givers, they in turn help themselves. 
Watch Paul Brandt's Build It Forward on BYU TV or with the free app. BYU Sports Nation On Demand. Download the BYU TV and BYU Radio apps or download the podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Please subscribe, rate, and review BYU Sports Nation presented by Mountain America Credit Union. Our question of the day, what was the one thing that jumped out to you during yesterday's BYU Media Day? On Twitter, at CougarAce70 says, how really good the team has become overall, both staff and players, especially Hall. Rewatch the Utah game. Dang, he looked great against a really good team. Sadly, this is his last year as a Cougar. Well, obviously, that's not uh, official, but certainly, uh, if he continues his play, he's going to have options. We'll just uh, leave it at that. One of my favorite plays from Hall in that game, I think it was fourth down and 11, uh, and, and, and no score. I believe there was no score. It might have been three to nothing. Anyway, BYU goes for it. It's like they're near midfield, and he runs for 18 yards or whatever and keeps the drive going. On a fourth down and long, he turns the corner, and he's got open space in front of him. That, that was a gutsy call yes, and great execution, and, and he dominated the entire game. The, one, of, one of the many things that makes Jaron Hall as good as he is is his composure. Regardless of the situation, and I was talking to some of the, uh, the offensive linemen yesterday about this, it doesn't change regardless of the situation, whether things are going good or bad. He stays the same. That is such a perfect trait for a quarterback. Absolutely. All right. Uh, our elite voice of the day is presented by Sundance Mountain Resort. Comes from at USU Coog 11 on the gram. If BYU's play on the field can match Jaron Hall's hair, we are going 12-0. <laughs> well, 13-0 then. If we're thinking about it. Yeah. He's Get just going game. 12. He's looking at the regular season schedule. He's okay, going. I got you. With that hair, uh, you know, Riley Nelson's hair back in the day. Yes, got the absolutely. Two wins. Let's get to today's Rise and Shout Out. It's uh, presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Where are we going with this, Dave? Well, I thought our BYU TV crew, BYU radio crew, everybody yesterday, in conjunction with BYU Athletics, pulling off our 11th. Uh, media day on, on all our platforms and on ESPN3. It takes so much work to make it look like people are just sitting around having a good time. <laughs> so we give a shout out to everybody uh, that works here in this building and over to the athletics. A massive undertaking. Yes. And uh, and we've, we've done 11 and we've rocked them all. Yeah, well done as always. Thanks to today's guests, Riley Nelson and Steve Young. Conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use the hashtag BYUSN. For Dave, I'm Jason. Shout out to Cody Epps. Go Cougs.